Hi everyone, welcome back on the morning show and of course I'm smiling already because our guests are super fun and it definitely is an interesting project that they've got lined up and we're here to talk to, the, uh, to you uh, today about everything that they've been doing, the amazing work that they've been doing in the last uh, couple of years and the work that they want to do in 2012. We're here to say good morning to um, Fiona and Kirby Delandro from the Warehouse Project and first and foremost a very happy new year. Happy, Happy New, New year. year. Happy New Year. <laughs> All right, so that once that's been said, let's talk a little bit about um, the Warehouse Project. I mentioned earlier that some people may know the Warehouse Project as a venue. Uh, they may already have heard of the place, but not of the work that uh, you guys have been doing. But uh, let's go back in time and the reason for all of this. Where did the Warehouse Project begin? Uh, well, the Warehouse uh, began about three years ago. It was an idea that uh, Phil and I had. We just thought... Uh, uh, we just thought that uh, there's no better time in Sri Lanka to be able to um, sort of give back to the communities that are around us. And three years ago was the perfect sort of timing for that kind of thing to happen, where people can take their own initiative and actually be there for their own communities. I have to rewind a little bit there. Yeah. It was actually uh, Kirby who had a vision about a warehouse mm -hmm. located in an area where he could, we could reach out to communities that needed help. Uh, where we could bring in people from society as well, where it, can, it could be like kind of a halfway, in a mm. halfway mark, located in a halfway right, mark, yeah. where both people would feel comfortable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And within the space of two, it, it seemed like a huge vision. And I was like, yeah, Kirby, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see, let's see us get about this one. But Kirby's very good at dreaming big and thinking big, and he actually believes in the impossible and he makes it possible. And mm -hmm. two months, within two months, we found the ideal location in Maradana, mm -hmm. number 10. Mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah, that's Kirby how was saying before the show, uh, when we were talking about the location for Maradana, because mm -hmm. often people go out of Colombo in order yeah. to help people, in order to, you know, do something, yeah. uh, give back to the community. You feel like you need to go beyond what you exactly. already know. Uh, uh, but yeah. you found Maradana, and Maradana is mm -hmm. a special location because... Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it, um, yeah, it's, it's very cool to go outside, outside of Colombo to help out. But yeah. right here in Colombo, we have uh, most of the population in Colombo in little, small wooden houses. Uh, that we um, uh, that uh, that is located we call Waktas, yeah. you know and um, uh, so Maradana is uh, has a Maradana fort that area Maliga Wakta has about maybe close to about 800 Waktas mm. so 50 houses in each Wakta basically five people per house one perch wooden house no toilets no cooking facilities in fact in our area it's 20 houses or 25 houses per one toilet and one and kitchen, one kitchen cooking facilities. In fact, in our area, it's 20 houses or 25 houses per one toilet and one and kitchen. One kitchen. So that's why the warehouse project kitchen is so important where Melissa actually helps them to cook and do the whole thing. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, that, so we are in uh, a perfect location for society people. It's 15 minutes down from where you live. So you can, you can make a huge difference uh, for all those in TV land. Uh, you can make a huge difference 15, 20 minutes from where you live. You, yeah. know? you don't have to exactly travel two hours to do it, right? Yeah. And uh, the community people are right at your doorstep, and mm -hmm. uh, they really uh, uh, would uh, appreciate people uh, coming and helping out and transferring the technology that we already have in, in Colombo. Uh, Colombo is a city full of the right resources, the right technology, the right type of people. The experts in every profession is right there. And uh, one hour of your time, once, uh, once a month, makes a world of a difference to the kids in that area. This is, uh, this is what's interesting about uh, the Warehouse Project. Um, there, are, there are several things that you're doing. It's not just one thing. There are mm. several things that you're doing in order to make uh, the, live, the livelihoods of the people in the community, mm -hmm. in that area, just that much better. So you're mm. involving adults, you've got children, and they're on very, on very, very, uh, they're very diverse, each of the yeah. projects. So um, let's talk about EAT. Um, which is, okay. uh, yeah. It, it, it was the very first yeah. one that took off, the okay. very first program. Right. And it was all about feeding, feeding yeah. people. Okay. So every morning, uh, we started off a little earlier, but now we're on 8 a.m. Yeah. Uh, we have people coming from the neighboring communities, and basically we give them one wholesome meal exactly. every single day. Yeah. So mostly we have um, the elderly, the elderly the who, 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 who are unemployed, yeah. uh, but we also have single parents and we also have children who come yeah. in, yeah. handicapped and yeah. disabled as well. Yeah. Okay, so that's quite, I mean, uh, you're talking about Maradhan, you're talking about, like, like you said, you've got so many vaktas in the area. Yeah. Uh, approximately how many, um, how many people basically would come in, say, in for a week? How many basically people? Basically we have, we, we uh, in fact, about over 700 people per week uh, with food and 
uh, milk and yeah. whatever. Mm -hmm. uh. What's interesting about this again um, is that it's the people in the communities themselves who are coming there and, Absolutely. and cooking and doing That's all that. That's why it's sustainable. Yeah. You know, if uh, we, we are n what we don't want to look like is we go into a place and being the um, uh, high society ones giving a helping hand. That's yeah. Then there is no ownership, yeah. right? What it is is actually a kitchen and uh, a space, 15,000 square feet of a space, that is actually owned by the community. Hmm. So the people who run the kitchen are actually Ramani and the crowd, the, the ladies in the area. So they are actually feeding themselves. We just, uh, we just make sure that we facilitate uh, uh, them helping themselves. Yeah. And in this way, dignity is maintained. And yeah. we're all about that. We're not, mm -hmm. all, we're not about handouts. Yeah. We're all about the community. Ha has the capacity to help themselves, and we are just facilitating that in that area. Yeah. I, um, in, in our conversations before the show as well, you use the word dignity, and I, I really appreciate the fact that that is something that you seem to have a lot of attention, you focus a lot of attention on the fact that people, you're not, it's not just doling out and making sure that yeah. you're, you, you're not trying to be anybody's savior. You're really right. making sure that, yeah. you know, I, that their dignity is maintained by yeah. everything that you are doing. Mm -hmm. um, something else that uh, seems like a really interesting project, and for those out there who may have a little bit of free time um, and the skills or the resources, this is something also that you might want to get involved in. The homework club, uh, which mm -hmm. is also, you, you call it the milk club. How yeah. does the milk club work? Well, every uh, school day, after school, all the kids come uh, to the warehouse project. They gather, well, officially we start at 3 o'clock, but they yeah. storm the place straight after school. They just can't wait to get in there. So they come with all their books and pens and papers and stuff like that, and they s they, they, we separate them according to whatever groups and ages yeah. and stuff. And uh, we have volunteers that come in and each day from Monday to Friday, we have different classes. So m one day we focus on maths, the next day we focus on English, and, and so on and so forth. Yeah. But um, also we help them with their schoolwork, their homework. Yeah. Yeah. And we give them milk, we give them something to eat, we yeah. give them vitamins, uh, we teach them about personal hygiene and yeah. just fun stuff, the sports, games. Yeah. So it's a place for them to hang out. Um, we also have the older kids coming in, and they as well uh, volunteer themselves to teach mm. and help help out instead of you know yeah. going and doing. This is, what this is very interesting. What Fiona is talking about, where the older kids. I just want you to go back to your school days when you were like 15, 16. <laughs> I know what I was doing when I was 16. You know, <laughs> I, 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 I leave. So. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I would leave school. I'm with my friends. I'm you know probably getting high somewhere. I don't I don't know, right? But these kids in. Yeah. It's unbelievable to see they would actually, the older kids would come to the warehouse and actually teach the younger kids yeah. uh, their homework. Yeah. You know, and that's, uh, that shows that the, the program has really paid off in, in infusing um, a, a culture to them that they can be valuable to their own community. Yeah. And that's what it's about, yeah. right? Um, now, if in, in Colombo, in society, you don't get, where do you get the older kids actually calling their friends, parents up and saying, hey, can we come and teach, teach yeah. homework to... Uh, your, yeah. your, the younger kids. Yeah. You don't get that happening. It's a responsibility yeah. that now they yeah. have. You know, so when they finish what they yeah. need to do, they're like, hey, there are, there are children who are waiting for yeah. us. We're needed. You know? yeah. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Um, and the idea, yeah. the concept is that uh, we also place the older kids, into, uh, we give them jobs, right? Yeah. The concept is, okay, if you go to barrister and you become a barrister, then you need to come back and teach uh, your community the skills that you know. So it's yeah. all about a culture of giving back. Yeah. Yeah, and what's again interesting about this project is that um, n not just getting people, not just getting some of the older kids involved. If the older kids weren't involved in this, they may be spending their time, and this might be a generalization, mm -hmm. but maybe spending their time doing something that they shouldn't, shouldn't be doing be to right. begin with. Yeah. And right. here they've got this perfect outlet yeah. where they've got right. the space to come back in and do something exactly. that's interesting. Exactly. That's so for exactly those right. out there who are watching us right now who mm -hmm. may want who may not have money because sometimes you've got the money, you just don't have the time. Sometimes you've yeah. got the time, you don't have the money. It's yeah. one yeah. of those things. Absolutely. Sometimes you've got both, but you know, yeah. um, for someone who has a little bit of time in yeah. the evenings, one day a week, if you have any kind of, you know, oh you're yeah, constantly looking for volunteers. We are looking, looking for yeah. volunteers. Absolutely. Whatever yeah. your yeah. skill, if you have a certain talent, um, if you are talented with a certain instrument, you can come there and teach them. You know, these kids are hungry to learn. Yeah. yeah. They're, they're just. They're, and they're so talented, they're so capable, all they need is to be guided in the right direction. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what the Warehouse Project is about. We're not uh, interested in uh, channeling funds or re no. receiving money on any scale whatsoever. Yeah. But what we want is we want people to come and, and share what their talent is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so for example, we have uh, friends of ours who, who um, uh, for example, is an optician. 
Yeah. So they'll come there and we host an eye clinic. Yeah. And uh, recently we had it, um, I think somewhere last uh, 2011, uh, where we gave you know spectacles free to yeah. all the the community. Yeah. So they came and checked everyone's eyes and gave them spectacles. Same with the with the lawyers. Friends who are lawyers would come and they'd hang out and give free consultation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we we're, we're planning to have uh, friends who are accountants will come yeah. there and <laughs> teach the. Uh, teach them to cook, the teach them to play cricket, whatever, whatever it is, whatever, whatever if you've is, got yeah. a skill that, that you feel like you can, whatever you've got really yeah. is what you need to be yes. able to, but yeah. you don't have to have a, a particular degree in no. it, you, need, you just need to have the passion to want to, exactly. to change somebody's exactly. life. Exactly. And um, we have one more project that we're going to be talking about, and then I just want to talk about the whole inspiration behind all of this. Borderless, which is also a really cool uh, concept. Let's talk a little bit about how that works. Uh, well. Uh, borderless works uh, um, like this. We, in Colombo, there is a huge gap between uh, uh, society uh, per se and community. You know, I, I lived in Watfula. I grew up there, so I could. Uh, I remember my childhood was getting out on the road there, hanging out with the guys, playing cricket with my neighbors. You know, it, that's how I grew up, and I I could um, relate very horizontally without any problem up to date. You know, yeah. I can re relate horizontally. Yeah. But you know, people get uh, they do well, they become uh, fluent, and they move to maybe Colombo or whatever it is, and then suddenly the gap between the community and society is, is, is becomes quite vast. What we're doing here is we are actually bringing everyone onto one platform again and trying to bridge the gap through art, theater, drama, and music, okay? Mm. So we've got people like Jagat Vira Singh, who are really awesome. We have programs there with 50 community kids, 50 society kids. We put them together once a month for one year, and they start building relationships and building, uh, exchanging cultural values and stuff like that. Mm. So we are actually uh, trying to prevent this um, vertical dialogue that is happening right now. For instance, look, I live in Watel now, now I live in Colombo. Uh, if, uh, say, I don't have kids, but my kids had to relate with the community people, it will be through a laborer's kid or a driver's kid. So there is a vertical dialogue that's happening between our kids and their kids, yeah. right? What we do here is we bring them on one platform, there's horizontal dialogue again, and uh, uh, dignity is maintained again. Dignity is maintained. Yeah. I, I love this term. <laughs> uh, but uh, one more thing, I think, because we're running short of time yeah. uh, before before we uh, say goodbye to you. Um, you're talking about the warehouse project as a model for um, other people to be inspired. You don't have to have the same facilities that mm -hmm. perhaps you did. Yeah. But uh, it's not want a franchise. To it's not mm. a franchise. Yeah. <laughs> but wanting to the whole passion of wanting to give back to communities. So mm. someone watching us today may be inspired to do something little, start off in some way. It doesn't yeah. have to be in the same magnitude as uh, the, the way yeah. the two of you have managed to co-found this amazing project. But let's maybe want to give a little bit of a word of advice or encouragement for somebody who feels like they really, that this is the time and this is something that they want to do. Well, I, I, I think uh, uh, the, f the key in it is to continue to be inspired and have an absolute passion and drive. And, and uh, I, I think everything falls into place. It's all to do with how passionate you are about uh, getting, um, uh, how passionate you are to build your community. And I, I, I really believe that people with a passion uh, I don't know how it happens. Uh, I call it God's grace. People have other ideas about it, but uh, it it falls into place. You want to do something good for your community. Uh, that's how it happens. For it us. just links up. It just links up. Things happen. Doors open. I mean, we spend a lot of our uh, time uh, focusing on us, 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 us. You yeah. know, and we did that. Um, but then it, it reached a certain point, and we're like, hang on a minute. You know, there's so much we can do where we are now, you know? Let's not wait till we earn so much. Let's not wait till we make it to this level or that level. Wherever you are at, whatever stage of your life you're at, you can make a difference right here and right now. You yeah. can be the change you want to see in the world. Absolutely, right. um, and your passion is contagious, and yeah. that's what happens, and that's I what this is about. I agree, <laughs> amazing <laughs> stuff to start 2012 with. It's, uh, you, you two are the perfect guests for the Monday morning show awesome. on, on the first day. <laughs> we're back for the year, so. We've been uh, we've been talking to Kirby and Fiona De Landroll. Thank you very much for being on the show, and we Thank wish you the you. very best of luck with everything Thank for 2012. All I'm the best sure to you too. We would have you back on the show very soon to talk a little bit more about this. Right now, we need to take a little bit uh, look at a video uh, that we've got lined up for you. We hope you enjoy this. When you come back, we have lots more on GMSL, so make sure you don't go anywhere. Awesome. Welcome to Colombo, the capital of Sri Lanka, with over six million people. This is the melting pot of Sri Lankan society. While some do okay, others live off as little as one dollar a day. Centrally located, the slums are home to many of these people. And while the bustle of the city continues around them, some have set out to make a difference. Well, the Warehouse Project is an initiative uh, that has been started by a group of people 
uh, because we really believe that we can be the change we want to see in the world. In this area, there are 25 uh, houses for one toilet. And there are 25 uh, houses for one kitchen. So each person lives in a one perch wooden house, five people in one house, and that's uh, most of this community. The warehouse, situated on the edge of the Maradana slum, is the centre of this group's work. Their goal is ambitious, but something we would take for granted. We make sure that the people in this area get one solid protein meal a day. Uh, there are people in this area, there are uh, mothers and old people who can't actually uh, fend for themselves or get food for themselves. So that uh, happens through a community kitchen program. So it's not only uh, giving them to eat, but actually teaching the fishermen how to fish kind of thing. To help foster understanding, the Warehouse Project also brings children together to share stories through art. We uh, bring both society and community children into one platform and uh, through art, theatre, drama and music we start uh, uh, interacting and uh, having programs that they will interact with each other and exchange the values of their culture. While the kids paint, several projects are underway in the slums. A microfinance scheme is giving small business a chance at a future. This is Mr. De Silva, and he runs the kade in the shop here with his wife, Shriyani De Silva. And what we're doing, we are starting up a microfinancing project where we will help these people with a sort of a loan that will get them out of their situation and expand their business. All kinds of people are benefiting from this scheme, and it proves that with a little bit of help, anything is possible. We are just a small community trying to make a difference, and we need all the help we can get. You heard it. They need all the help they can get. Go check it out, Warehouse Project. See what you can do and see how you can get involved. I'm sure you'll find your time and your effort well spent. Right now, we need to take a very quick break. When we come back, of course, we've got more music coming your way, as well as some really quirky and interesting stories from around the world with our morning cup of tea. All of that in just a bit. Right now, that break we were looking forward to. Right now. Welcome back. Unfortunately, it's almost the end of today's show. But before we go, a quick reminder once again of our email address. It's channel1 at maharaja.lk. That's channel1 at maharaja.lk. Make sure you email us with your dedications request and let us know what kind of things you would like to see a little more of on our morning show. And we will make sure that we feature all of those things for you. Today's show, of course, we featured Kirby and Fiona Delano Roll from the Warehouse Project. And they were very inspiring personalities. And hopefully, um, you yourself will be inspired to do something. As I said, you don't have to really be changing the whole uh, course of things. You don't have to uh, save the world sometimes. You just need to make little changes um, to make a really big impact. So if there's something that you want to be doing, um, that you've had an eye for, that you've had kind of a feeling for, but you've been holding back because you just don't have the time, make time to make those changes as small things that might make a very big difference to somebody else. And with those words, I will leave you on today's show. It's 2nd of January, and of course, it's the beginning of a brand new year. So we wish you all the very best for the new year once again, and I will see you again tomorrow at the same time. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.